Hey guys, Travis with Tech Raptor back at Gen Con 2019, and this is the interview you've been waiting for. We're talking with Adam, and we're gonna do something a little bit different talking about Kingdom Death today. So if you're game for it, I wanna talk about the design process. Okay, I might have to close my eyes for a second, and focus, but we can do this. So I'm going, I've always been curious about how you come up with the idea for a monster, how you decide if it's good enough to have art created, then from there, how you design the gameplay, Etc. So I'm going to act as your muse, and I'm going to give you okay. some terrible ideas. All right. Let's and we're going to see if we can make a working monster out of this. Okay. Uh, if we can't, uh, I'm sure anybody who has done creative work in the past knows that most of your work ends up on the pedigree floor anyway. Well, we're on. We're at the Kingdom Myth booth. We're close enough to it to where anything anyone says I own. So all this to just be a future release. If easily. This, if this idea ends up being something that you want, it is all yours, my friend. Excellent. So being the the creative muse that I am. At 4 a.m., I came up with these these little brain ticklers. So this is the Tech Raptor. Okay. This is a uh, monster that uses night vision. So the darker it is, the easier it finds survivors. Okay. And it has scythe-like sword arms. Okay. And it has sweeping strikes like the Kingsman. And it also tries to isolate its prey like the White Lion. Okay. But instead of dragging a survivor away, it will pounce and knock all the rest of the survivors away. The survivors want to cluster because the closer they are, their lantern light multiplies and makes it harder for the tech raptor to see them. Okay. Decreasing its accuracy. This is very specific. <laughs> 4 a.m. jet lag. So, if this was an idea that you thought, man, I like this idea, where do you start? Do you start with art? Do you start with mechanics? I mean, we've got to start with the name here. Okay. Like, tech raptor? Like, what does that... Like, what, there's no... There's no like tech as we know it in King of Death, right? So how how could we have the word tech? Okay. Right? So let's let's chop that off. We're just raptor. All right. All right. So we got a raptor monster. So is it a dinosaur? Is it something else? Just, what did you say about its arms? It had scythe-like arms. Scythe-like swords for arms. Okay. So what biologically speaking, like why did it evolve that way? Did it need to could, like did its species need to climb something constantly? Right. Like. Why else would it have sword arms? Like they're completely inefficient. It couldn't groom itself. It'd be right, a disaster, right. right? Okay, so let's assume that now we know that this thing has to climb, right? So if it needs to climb constantly, it needs to climb because it's chasing, either it's chasing prey or it's trying to get away from a predator. Maybe there's something atmospheric about its biome. Let's leave biome out because okay. that gives us ex too much reasons and excuses for things. Right? That's like unfair. Like, well, you know, because of its circumstances. Anyway, so let's say that, uh, what do you think? Do you think it's escaping from something or it has these appendages because that's where it needs to go to actually eat stuff? Well, I would think it would be an ambush predator, so it's probably going to try to get the drop on. Okay, so now we've already hit our first contradiction. If it's trying to climb things to get to food, right, why is it eating survivors at all? These are the kind of things that we talk about during the designs of our monsters. So, you know, a lot of this starts internal because we want it to make sense. It has to, even if the sense is inane and bizarre, but it, in Kingdom Death, it needs to at least be explainable to each other so that it feels real. And that's like a very important part of the way I design monsters and the way I give feedback to the team when they bring me things like, does it feel like something real solid? Uh, do you want to keep going with this example, or do you want to move on to something else? Well, let's so let's talk about that. Let's real. Want, right? let's, let's talk about that. Real. Right. It needs to be real. It needs to be real. It needs to be uh, believable within the game world, even if only the designers can explain it, because we show, not tell. And what the monster's up to, there has to be a reason. It is a living organism in this ecosystem. So, so obviously that takes more than fifteen minutes for you, because my idea is already on the cutting room floor. But, it's not a kind of floor. Just saying, like, this needs to already evolve. It's right. Not a, not an so if we get to that point where this monster can exist, it logically makes sense. We have a place for it in the food chain. What's the next step? Okay, so let's see if we can turn this into a monster. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we have this this monster that's got uh, ball-like appendages, right? It, we know that it needs to eat survivors, so it's not going up somewhere high to eat. That's why the hell it needs survivors. Let's. We don't. We don't add too many layers. So let's say that it's escaping from something. Okay. So it has something that is a larger natural predator, right? Um, 
there's a thing you mentioned is that it can see in the dark, right? Uh, there's not a lot of things in Kingdom Death that can see in the dark, because uh, like since light and darkness is such an important theme, we want to ensure that if something could see in the dark, it would generally have other senses to help explain it, like the white line. Can the white line see in the dark? Let's just say it has an incredible sense of smell, right? What its vision as far as like light can concern. Like, cats have fantastic vision, but the way they see things is very different. And this is, you're going to get into the science. I understand I could be wrong here, but I believe uh, cats' vision is generally pretty blurry, but they see things in motion with incredible clarity. So like when a fly goes by, you see a cat just like instantly focus in on it. That's not how our eyes work. Our eyes work the opposite. So if you can imagine if you had like cat vision, everything would be kind of like blurry and you wouldn't understand anything because you're a cat. So you're in this blurry, weird world. Blah, 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 blah. And they like things to sit by it. What's, what's, what's that? Right? So this thing you said does have low light vision. So why would it have low light vision? So low light vision is something that it developed specifically for the survivors or is it part of the reason that it's helping it escape from what it's looking for, right? Uh, let's say that uh, the thing that is chasing it has bad vision, but has an incredible sense of smell. And that uh, these tech, well, just raptors have a, the ability to repress their scent glands. And this allows them to hide from the prey and their enhanced vision allows them to see these things in front. So let's take these things eyes and bring them out further. So now, now the monster's starting to look a little weird, right? It's not just like a regular raptor. It's got these long appendages that are used for escape, but it's good for killing smaller prey. And it has eyes that are wider on the side of its head so that it can see whatever it's looking for, right? Okay, so what's what's the next step? What's the next thing you want to know that we can try to turn this into the monster? So uh, it uh, prefers to isolate its prey. It's more of a hit and run. Yeah. Okay. And so we've established the run. Yeah. So I guess we would need to establish the hit and its preferred method of hitting. Right. I mean, that's in Kingdom Death is easy. It's okay. a monster. It's already more powerful than Survivor. Sometimes smarter. That's see, whatever. It's got claw arms. Its teeth could probably chew through them. Uh, let's instead talk about not just how it kills things, but how it digests things. Okay. Do you see this thing digesting? survivors in any different or particular way? Like, what part of the survivors is it actually after? I would think that it would be going after their heads. Okay, their heads. I mean, the heads have uh, brains inside of it. Uh, brains have a lot of uh, electricity compared to other organs. Like, we already kind of did that with the Watcher. So that this idea is already on the cutting room floor. It's not going to be an electricity that's going to happen. So what else about the heads is it after? We already have bone eaters and stuff who are obsessed with heads. Um, Could it be after the eyes? To keep it a vision thing? I mean, that's like thematically linked, but not scientifically not linked, scientific. right? It's just like, it eats eyes, therefore it has better vision. What? <laughs> right? Again, yeah, doesn't doesn't make sense. How about the mineral-rich liver? Mineral-rich liver. Okay, so, all right. So, I guess a happenstance of suppressing your scent organs, right? Uh, maybe that makes it so that the blood in these things' bodies filters at a much crazier rate. So this liver is, I don't know, uh, if it's going super fast, it's like a, a performance liver, right? And uh, part of the thing it needs to do is ingest uh, other creatures' livers so that on a molecular level, it can repair the damage to its own liver that the fluctuation of its blood when it's suppressing its scent glands meet. Like, I know this is not completely making sense, but we're, we're on tangent, right? And this is how these things kind of go as we start to connect things and have more of a story biologically of what this monster is about. So it's after their lips. Great. Which means that its weapons are pretty perfect for it because it can bisect them quickly and get to it. I guess, uh, should we give it a really long tongue so that it can like get to it? Because otherwise right now, it's not going to be able to pick up a little. This is true. Right? <laughs> it's just like chopsticks. <laughs> Or we could go the other route and decide that it does have that sort of, uh, of like dexterity to do that, right? Is it creepier if this thing has a long tongue and can get to your liver after chopping in half? Or is it so proficient with these things that it can dissect you and pick them up and toss it into the air and eat it, no problem, right? And if it's proficient with that, then we add to the next sort of like design element of Kingdom Death, which is the monsters are generally smart, right? And it's hard to depict something that's smarter than you in a game, so we have to do that generally in like the things you find when you're hunting it. 
are the things that are in the events. And uh, we could say that these things are quite fussy and maybe part of the way that they help uh, stay away from the critters that are attracting it and make sure that they've like marked off their territory is using their long appendages to like rework some of the stone faces and make little like art projects for themselves because they're so good with it, right? So now they're leaving like like uh, faces with different expressions to purposely mark uh, their own territory so they know where they've been and where it's most likely that their predators are coming for, which they can see easily with their superior eyes. And now we don't have no reason to give it a long time because it's so good with its long, uh, you know, sorcery power. <laughs> go go gadget orbs. Right. So going back to the creature's name, uh, typically we sort of add an additional word to it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not like on purpose. It just sort of seems to be what we do. White line, a little bit of mosquito, nightmare man. So what is a good adjective that can help describe this thing? Right. Right now we've got fussy raptor. Not quite. <laughs> not quite. quite strike your heart. Strike, yeah. Fear in your heart. So what, what, are, what are we going for? No, we can't have tech. Uh, but is there something, you know, around in the word related to tech uh, or in that hemisphere that we could repurpose next to Raptor? Kind of like give it something that tells a little bit about it. Certainly, you can think. I'm not leaving this as like a, I have the answer. Right. I'm just wondering if you can think of anything. It's a brainstorming, right? What do you got, guys? Get out the thesaurus. <laughs> I got nothing. Oh, we're, we're interviewing right now. I wouldn't say curious raptor because it's not powerful enough. Right. I uh, wouldn't say investigation raptor because that also doesn't quite do it. Mm -hmm. uh, what is related to investigation that has a more powerful connotation to it? Uh, can't say like sex crime raptor. That would no. be an instant no no. We go right into special victims unit, right? Uh, Detective raptor, raptor, I feel like you need a fedora, so that's out. Yeah, and I already made the Pikachu movie, that was adorable. Yeah. I mean, we can't compete with that, that's okay. Uh, what do we got? I mean, you can go down the road of just like general nightmare things. Mm -hmm. Now that we're the Nightmare Ram, we can't call it the Nightmare Raptor. It's too easy. You know, the Bolivian mosquito was originally the Nightmare Mosquito. Oh, okay. I was like, we can't, uh, everything will just be Nightmare. It won't work. Uh, it's efficient with its things as surgical blade ra surgical raptor surgical raptor all right so what what else is going on with surgeons scalpels scalpel raptor and raptors too like there's such a connotation for Jurassic Park and right. turning doorknobs and stuff you can go generic and be like awakening raptor Seats around, like, like, fancy all the time. Um, and so obviously, just because, I mean, we're, we're we currently hit a stumbling block and just naming the thing. Yes. So, Raptors is it's tough. It is right. right. So if we have a solid idea. If we did have a name, what's the next step? So are we still trying to fit it into our world? Are we uh, trying to figure out how it looks different than what's that pink rock called? Rock thing. Quartz. Mm. Let's say it's made out of quartz. Okay. It's a quartz rather. Right? Fucking weird. Yeah. Jagged edges. Oh, you have green, right? It's the jade wrap. Jade wrap. There you go. So we have the jade wrap. We know how it marks its territory. Yeah. We know where it fits in the food chain. Yeah. We know maybe why it's eating survivors. Yeah, lots of livers. Yeah. And we know that it can do something that most monsters in Kingdom Deck cannot. Yeah. Uh, do we need to figure out what eats it? Is that no. going to determine what level uh, Not necessarily. Or, I mean, okay. at this point, we have enough to be like, let's start talking to artists about it. Okay. Um, I, unless I have a very specific vision, we'll sometimes, I used to always have a specific vision. A lot of those like dreams have been fulfilled at this point where I really wanted to do a Daddy Wall like concert. Those creep me out. Regular spider doesn't creep me out. It's not like a little ball legs coming out. No, no, didn't like. Um, so I would probably, you know, hit up a few artists and be like, here's the idea. Here's, you know, what it's up to. Give me some sketches. Okay. And from there, uh, we'll take the sketches. And typically they'll go back and forth for a little while until something like strikes. Um, so let's back up for a quick second. Yeah. Let's try to define a little while. Sure. Because 
a little while to me is you know 15 minutes to three days yeah where i'm sure a little while in monster design can be months atmos had 20 revisions okay just in the concept drawing area that was the most that everything went through and so even um, even an artist that is rapid fire getting your sketches back it's going to take time to get you 20 revisions right it, it seems to be at this point though. okay i don't know if that's just becoming picky or because uh i have you know you know, I already mined what I had in mind. You know, I've already mined my own brain vault to things I really wanted to see. So now we're creating really new things as opposed to things that like I thought about growing up. And that seems to take a bit more time and a bit more back and forth. And that's just for the 2D art. Yes. And then once you get the 2D art, then the sculpting process. Okay. So let's go there. We have the 2D art complete. Uh, we got our Jane Raptor. Uh, and I would take it and talk to my team about it. At this point, we have a meeting every day uh, with the currently three, three sculptors that are on the team at the time. And we would talk about it. Like, I'd be like, hey, does, any, does this concept ever speak to anyone? Does anyone really want to do it? Usually it's like then a, a silence. It's like no one wants to like take it unless they're really feeling it. So let's say, for example, Karen's like, yeah, I, I love this. I really want to do it. I'm like, all right, Karen. Take a couple days later, because we have our meetings every day, comes back with work in progress. What do you think? And then if I have any very specific things, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Like, you know what? That if we're saying that quartz idea just isn't working, the texture isn't right. Let's make this thing much smoother now that we're going with the J Raptor idea. So let's do that. So we'll do that. They'll come back and we'll look at it like, oh, you know, the animation line is pretty whacked out. It kind of looks like it's falling over. It's not the feeling we wanted to have. Let's straighten it back up. And then, this is new to us now, we end up passing the work around a lot. Uh, we didn't used to do this. I used to feel very um, sensitive about giving someone else's work to another artist, uh, just like treasure what they made. But since the brand has grown so much, and again, I think uh, my comfortability has also extended, and I've been working with these guys for so long now, it's like someone will say, you know what, can I take over the scope for a day? I have an idea. I'm like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. You know, come back and present some new ideas and some different ways to look at it. So it's a very organic process where the, the sculpt will sometimes rotate between people, often returning to the person who started it several times before we decide, all right, let's 3D print this thing. And then we hook up with Sterling, so our engineer. We're like, okay, let's print it. And the question is always, how big should it be? Uh, recently, we've been making things too big and then having to kind of bring them down again a little bit. Uh, we'll 3D print it, and then that's where I do a sort of in-person review. And like so much of this is just from the gut. I look at it. If something's glaringly off, it's an easy. Let's just adjust this. Right? Uh, you know what? The uh, blade raptor's arms are just not long enough. We decided that it could make like little statues. As it is now, it'd have to bend over way too far. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. So let's make them a lot longer. Okay. So we made them longer. Um, and then we would print it out again. So we have this sort of like luxury of having all this technology. And look at it again. Once I get to the point where I'm happy with it, I start to pass it around the office just to see if I have any open sets or something. You know, maybe Anne is like, I don't really understand why it has like eyes on its butt. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I guess that is kind of weird. It's like, what? They, does he have a brain back there too? Like, why are there? Why are their eyes back there? Like, well, we're doing this thing where we want to be able to see so much. It's like, well, you know how much you can see, how much prey animals see with a vision when they have the eyes on the side of them. They already have that. Plus, like, eyes in the back of the head would be a liability. It would have no way to, like, clean them out if you got stuff in based on the positioning of the arm. You're like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Let's, let's just get rid of it. And then I'll go back and be like, who did this? Like, they were in the concept. So I'm like, I just thought it looked cool. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And that's sort of like the process. And yes, you are right. The artwork and the sculpture come before the game design. Okay. And so uh, we get a, a sculpture that you're happy with. Yeah. We have 2D art that you're happy with. Yeah. Now we're going to start creating gameplay content. When do you decide that this is going to be a quarry monster versus maybe a nemesis maybe versus maybe a one-off vignette? Uh, generally in the beginning. Okay. It's just kind of like horror monsters to make you feel like horror monsters. You know, Nemesis monsters have a very different uh, 
I don't know, I don't want to say vibe, but like their agendas that typically have agendas, where Empire monsters are uh, more on the like just doing my thing to survive level. Um, the vignette's new, so I mean, that was just like, we had this awesome, awesome white lion, and like, we need to release this. Also, we want to make some smaller content. Let's do that. And so, so you'll assign it effectively, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, a design direction. Yeah. And who then do you assign it to a team member to get the gameplay rolling? And how do you determine its behavior based on the design document about how it fits in the world? Yeah. Or I'll what typically might give it to a team member and I'll give them a brain dump okay. where I just like, in a very unedited fashion, just talk about the monster. I put my headphones on, go to my, my dark place, whatever you want to call it. And just write about it, write about it, write about it, and then it's on to them to sort of like take the you know the best notes that they feel from it to start to put something together. And that's often where we have the most back and forth. So like no, no, no. Like I said clearly here that it has white spit, and the reason for that is so and so far. Like, I didn't think that was important. I'm like no, it has to go in. You don't understand how important this is. Because to me, like those little details are everything, and it's sometimes hard to connect the dots on them until all the pieces are laid out. It's similar to the delay with the gambler's chest. Like the gambler's chest was amazing and we had all this content we were working on, but it didn't it didn't even cross my mind that it could be a cohesive singular thing until like all the parts were developed enough and laid out. You know, it was just kind of like, yeah, well uh, this monster and that monster and a couple rules here. You know, it felt more to me like box of smaller content right. box of and so how far into design do we get before there is a point of no return or are you willing to scrap something up until you're ready to pull the you know like send this thing to printer i've got the behavior i've got the ai i've got the gear. i mean we've we've never fully scrapped a monster that was at the point where it could go to print. It just hasn't happened. I think once I'm excited about it, that's when I start ordering all the artwork from trade cards and stuff. Like Double sphincter. Magnificent. Right? There's no way I'd scrap it. Right. So I think I think the, the stone, the thing that gets etched into the stone is once the artwork for its deck starts to get ordered. And then that's it. Like maybe we'll change some little things here. But the monster is baked. It's not changed. So how do you decide what to prioritize? Because obviously you have a thousand plates in here with a Kickstarter. You've got a million expansions in the works. How do you decide day to day now that we've got all these monsters past the point of no return? This is our focus. This is what I need to get excited about today. Do you just let that, you let your muse, your muse that's much better than me speak to that? Or do you have, do you sit yourself out, plan your week out? and then hit those. I've tried planning my week out. Mm -hmm. It didn't really last for long. Uh, I've tried just having the whole office focused on one thing at a time. I end up with a lot of people like really excited and eager to help, but then kind of being like left feeling that they're on the bench because they're just waiting for one person to finish something. Uh, honestly, it's work. You know? It's just like busy work. It is what it is. This time around, I'm going to try uh, planning the update to match what I'm going to be working on so that can be part of the driving force. That means that I'll be designing it and also thinking about how it will be presented to people instead of just designing it and then thinking about how do we present it now later and that may change things, but it's just, it's just work. And so uh, from my perspective, that brainstorming session and coming up with these ideas that maybe I like this idea, it's not going to work for this monster, might end up manifesting itself in like the Giga Ryan. Yeah. So for there's lack plenty of things that hit the cutting room floor that got moved somewhere else. Yeah, so for the for the lack of a better term, the danger of this creative process is to get you things you're even more excited about. Yes. Right. So this is why we see new things in the gamblers, just I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, Relentless, which is a uh, Lion God thing that he does, where he like keeps attacking mm -hmm. the little red bar. That was originally a DBK thing. <laughs> Can you imagine DBK, you know, uh, has his ball. It has everything else that's going on and in addition relentless so I remember at that point the team was like this is a wonderful mechanic Adam let's move it somewhere else like it's too much happening and I was like no it's, it's perfect here like no 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 please listen to reason I was like okay 
Fair so, so uh, for the monsters, say for the most recent Kickstarter, yeah, uh, you you kind of had a plan for each of those, obviously, because yeah, from you, pres- the pitch. you presented them as part of the pitch or stretch goals, yeah, etc. Where is the end game for monster, right? Because I know Kingdom Death and Kingdom Death Monster are kind of ubiquitous now, yeah, and there's going to be a metric f ton of content. Once it delivers, yes. Is there an end game where you're going to say, "Monster, my baby, is where I want it," or are we going to continue to see this, or is it just too early to uh, I definitely want to see the wave three through. I definitely want to see wave four through, uh, and then I absolutely want to see the stuff I want to do with the Ringtail Fox expansion, um, and then I have one more thing I can't talk about. This is too early. Well, I guess I could say it's related to a resin release we made a while ago, which is the Aries Knight. Okay. Good call. Um, and then I want to finally bring the scribe into the game world, like officially. That's that's as far as I have. Um, and then with the layer of the strange system giving us this ability to run so the game continues to blossom and have more repeated meaning for them. So that's something I'm, I'm pretty excited about. So getting that system so it felt right was super important to me. Uh, and it just means that it gives us more flexibility to design and bring it so there's more extension to the imaginative narrative of the players. But again, like as you said, you don't know exactly where that ends. You can only see so far. Only see so far into the right. But you haven't run out of gas yet. So oh, yeah. it's looking good. So let's switch gears really quick. Speaking of strain and maybe philosophies. So 1.5 seemed to, from 1.3, try to take the emphasis off of individual survivors. Where the philosophy system, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe seems like it tries to put the emphasis back on some individual survivors. How do those two ideas coexist? Or am I just misreading it? Uh, So emphasis on survivors is always there. It was more like comfortability and role within the community so that these resources known to us as the survivors, people are okay with sunset, right? That's kind of like where we are now, where people have their character, they love it, it's super important to them. With the philosophy system, you can only rank up a maximum of five times, and that's it. So you have all this exciting stuff happens, then it stops. And you know, the, the idea there is like, if you want to go deeper into the system, you kind of have to like pass the baton. Someone else needs to come. Like they've run out of juice, so to speak. So we have more of a natural kind of comfortability with seeing the survivors as members of this community you're building instead of as just your exclusive character. Do you have anything else you want to touch on? I'm going to nerf the antelope's pants. We made it too good. You did. I'm tired. I'm tired of all the playtest data. All right. What do you guys find today? Oh. Antelope. Yeah. No, no more of this. When? Where? It's going to be where's, the nerf alone. Where's the nerf alone coming in? When do Don't know it? exactly yet, but it's, it's as soon as I can make it happen. Okay. Nerf alone coming soon to Kingdom Death near you. Nerf alone and nuke alone, apparently. Excellent. I appreciate your time. Thanks for letting me pick your brain. Yeah. That's nice.